Hi everyone, this is Amy here. Today we are at the front of my property. Uh, this part, this section of my garden, I name my potted garden. The reason is all of these plants here that you see are all uh, planted in pots. And this part of my property is south facing. It receives approximately six to seven at least hours of sunlight every day during the summer months. So let's start here, uh, begin our tour here on the left side. Uh, this first flower we're looking at is a dahlia that I grew from a tuber. It is called Go Go Orange. It is a very, very nice um, flower. Love the coloring. It's uh, kind of suffering a little bit right now because some kind of white bug has been attacking it and I've sprayed it down and just waiting for her to recuperate. The next one beside her is also a dahlias that I grew from Tuber. This one I purchased at a local um, garden center. This is called Melody Dora. Very pretty coloring. And here I have my rose that I purchased this year. And as you can see, I absolutely love this dark color type of rose. And this one smells amazing. The only problem I have with this rose is she has not grown very much this year. As you can see, barely any growth. And she's suffering or is attacked by some kind of disease that's causing her stem to go brown. This one is called Oklahoma. Uh, yep, and uh, I hope she recovers and next year she'll do much better. Oh, also here, uh, let's note that I have a whole bunch of rows of Sharon on my property. I started off with three pots and over uh, the years they self-seed like crazy. So right now I have lots and lots all over my property. And here we have the purple flower here in front of us. This one is uh, called Pincushion or Scabiosa. This one I have two of um, in pots and I purchased these from Costco, I believe. These are so pretty and the most amazing part about this plant is look at all the bees that are on her right now. It is always covered in pollinators. The bees love this plant very very much and so do I. Look how pretty it is and it's done really really well. Last year I had one and it suffered from powdery mildew and died on me. These ones have been doing so well. Um, the other rose I have here is called apricot. Um, it's a drip rose. It stays quite small and compact. She had a really huge flush earlier in the season but right now she doesn't have a lot of bloom left but she's done amazingly well so far. Hope next year she'll give me more flowers. This one is a dahlias that I grew from tubers that I bought in a variety pack from Costco. Um, it's called Happy Single Assorted on the uh, box and look how pretty she is. Oh my gosh, out of all the uh, colors that were in this pack, this is by far probably one of my favorites. And I also have another dahlias here. Also came from a pack of two. Um, I can't remember where I got her from. Dark Desire I believe is what she's called. And I have a rose here. So she's planted in this really huge, I don't know, ceramic uh, pots here you can't really see. But this one apparently is a Davis, David Austin rose. It's really pretty rose, smells really nice. But she so far is her first year, have not produced a lot of flowers. I'm hoping next year she would do much better. This one I believe is called A Shropshire Lad. This begonia is, oh my god, a super performer. I have two of them. One is this one right here with really dark foliage. And I also have another one across over there which has green foliage. These two have been blooming nonstop all season long. I absolutely love them. I bought them as a hanging basket, removed them from their original pot um, I purchased from Walmart, and bumped them up into a bigger pot and they are just loving life here. Below her is a Sun King. I bought four of these. Two I placed in the backyard where they receive a little bit more sun, more shade, sorry. And the two are here in the front, one here, and then also one across here. These two receive a lot more sunlight. And because of that, you can see that the leaves are a little bit lighter in color. If they were placed in the shade, they would be a bit darker like this. 
Next to it is uh, the Nine Bark. I got this at a very good price, discounted at Canadian Tire, I believe, for only 15 bucks. Super good price for these. And then I got two of them, one on each side. This one here I was gifted many years ago by a neighbor. Um, I don't know what the name is, but based on its growth habit and the coloring, uh, my best guess would be Autumn Joy. She's so pretty at this time of year. I've, this is probably my favorite time of year, um, seeing the color like this. Early on, she's a bit green with green flowers. Okay, here I have a Powell Wow uh, white uh, cone flower. I've put them all, in, three of these in the same pot um, with some bucras here. So I got two bucras and the Powell white cone flower. I did two of these planters. One is, another one is right here. I'm hoping once they come back next year, when they're fuller, they're a bit bigger, I can put them either side of my main entrance. So that's this patch right here. The next patch to the right, I have this pink flower, this is a pink rose, sorry. This one is called Pink Knockout, I believe. Let's find her tag to make sure, yes. Um, in terms of growth, she's done really, really well, but flower production, I have to say she's so-so. She hasn't produced a ginormous or a, um, a lot of blooms this year, but I guess it's understandable because it's only her first year. So I hope next year she'll do better. Here's the nine bark we talked about earlier. So in this planter, I have um, two, two plants in there. The first one is, let's see here, I can show you the dahlias that I grew from seed. This is the first time I've heard or learned that you can actually grow dahlias from seed. So I tried it, bought a pack of it, and it turned out really well. They germinated really, really well. And the flowers are really pretty. The bees love these guys. Definitely growing those again next year. I have another rose in here. This year she has not um, produced many too many flowers. There's some buds here, but for the most part, it's just mostly um, leaf growth, which I don't mind. It's her first year. So hopefully next year she'll be stronger and we'll be producing a lot more flowers. And this one is called Princess Charlene de Monaco. The Sun King that we seen earlier, this one perceived, I guess, a lot more sun. So it is even lighter in color than the one that we just uh, seen a bit earlier. I really love this one. I've never grown it before, my first year. Um, this one is Hyssop, or I guess, uh, Ad Adagas, what is it called? Agashi or something like that. But Hyssop is much easier to pronounce. I love this coloring. The peach and the pinkish, purplish color is so pretty. Even when it's not blooming, it looks like it's blooming. I would, I hope these guys come back for me next year. If they don't, I will definitely be buying more of them. I think this one is called Mango Tango or something like that. Mango, yes. All right. This one is my other light pink uh, Gara. So I have two of them one in the backyard and one in the front. And as you can see, she's not looking her best right now. And the reason for that is because she is currently being attacked by aphids. And this is her second or third time being attacked. Um, usually I spray her down really hard with water and then that kind of somewhat resolved the problem, but they kind of come back again. So she's not looking that happy right now, unfortunately. Another planter right here. I have three um, flowers planted in one. Once again, is the dahlias that I grew from seed. As you can see, the bumblebees love her. Oh, are they so cute? And then, of course, this one. These, uh, this one is a mandevilla, I believe, is what you what you call this one. This one, I. Pot I bought as a very small plant and it took her forever stayed small for the longest time She's finally in bloom just too bad because the season is about to end soon There's also a rose here. This one is also a David Austin rose tiny bloom or bud Not much growth whatsoever Stayed small the whole entire time and this one is supposed to be really, really pretty, to be honest with you. And here's her tag. What is it? Port Sunlight. 
look at that isn't that gorgeous but I just haven't seen it so far to kind of tell you that I like it or not like it so I hope next year she'll produce way more flowers um, once she's more established okay the last patch over here um, has a lot a uh, few coleus this one right here is called wasabi much lighter in color i was told that the lighter colors tend not to do well in full sun but this one seems to love life in this spot this one here is called campfire i have two of them this one was doing extremely well most of all of her foliage was this really dark dark burgundy burgundy color and then for whatever reason in the last week or so she turned light like this i'm not sure if it's because sunburn um, or the season is changing but she was here all season so i don't know why she would get sunburned all of a sudden now right here is another autumn joy love the pink look how pretty it is and then just above her is a bobo. I bought three bobos this year, all of which I had in the front here. Then I noticed they were starting to burn a little bit. I removed the other two to the backyard to more of a shaded spot. I've kept this one here just to see and observe whether she would um, become accustomed to the sun or not so that next year I know what to do with them. Here's the other begonia that I showed earlier. This one is green with green leaves, uh, more pinky flowers than red compared to the one over here, which has the darker foliage and more of a red uh, blooms or flowers on her. Both are gorgeous. Both have performed amazingly well in the front here. And here I have a Cafe Olay variety dahlias that I got from Costco variety pack. This color is really, really nice. This bloom is not as big, but her other earlier blooms were ginormous. The only one thing I don't like about these Cafe Olay, although they're really gorgeous, they tend to flop and the branches break a little bit because the blooms are so big. In this planter here, it's not in bloom right now, but I have a Clematis and also a Climbing Rose. And I'm trying to train this rose to climb all the way up and across my garage door. I think that's going to take me quite a while to achieve that look, but I can't wait. Um, what is this rose called? Again, let me just look for the tag. Ah, uh, there's, there's the tag right here. Ah, Kiss Me Kate. Isn't that color gorgeous? And that's the clematis that is in the same pot. Uh, it was blooming early in the season, but now it's done. And here's another type of clematis here. This one was also in full bloom, like covered in blooms, but it's done now. This one is called Rain Dance. Here we have alyssum that I started from seed. It was so, so pretty when it was uh, earlier in the season when it's not as tired looking. I've trimmed it down once and it's grown out and it's looking tired again. I think I'm just gonna let her go since it's already at the end of the season. Right here I have two long planters that I have some lantanas and also uh, some mini dahlias in here. These dahlias I got from Costco. I think it's a pack of six or nine, I can't remember. But truthfully, they have not done very well in these planters. Barely any blooms uh, started, like took a while to start. I don't think I'll be doing this again, uh, but I will definitely do these lantanas again. Originally, I wanted only this color, but when I went to buy them, this one was not in bloom and when it bloomed it was a different color but you know what i actually really love this color look how vibrant and pretty it is i might just do the whole thing next year with this just this color and i have a hooker here as you can see i love hookers they are all over my property mostly in pots this one here, first year me grow, uh, that I'm growing them, this is a fuchsia. I bought three big ones and this one is performing the best. I think because it has more shades, I guess. Um, it's in a more shaded area. Look how pretty it is. It's been blooming, uh, blooming all season long. I might try to bring this inside the house to save it and overwinter it. We'll see. Another Cafe Olay. Isn't she pretty? And over here, I have two um, hydrangeas that I bought this year. I have them in really big pots. This one right here, these are the Endless Summer Variety. This one is, uh, the tag just says the original. And this one is called 
broom, broom struck, I believe. This one gets a little bit more sun. And look at the blooms it, it has on there. So pretty. Normally people amend the soil to make their blooms blue, but I actually prefer the pink color. So I've just left it alone. And more hookers in pots. I don't know the name of these, sorry guys, but sometimes when I go grab these, the pots or the tag just says hookra. There's nothing specific that is mentioned there. So that's the entrance to my house and then to the right here is an evergreen I've had for ages I'm trying to shape it I'm not that good at it yet but I'm trying I'm learning it's ginormous I kind of want to lop off the top but I'm kind of scared to mess it up so I've just left it alone sorry about the yellow box here my neighbors are renovating here I have another uh, hydrangea. This one is also the same one that we just seen. It's the broomstruck one. This one doesn't have as many blooms because I had it in more of a shaded area. So I've moved it over to the front here. Hopefully she will produce more blooms. Here I have some daisies. I think my son picked this color. Usually I don't go for the yellow. He was with me at the nursery and he wanted to buy like one of every color. We compromised and got five colors. This is another of the Autumn Joy. It's so pretty. Look how pretty the pink color is. And then I have the Annabelle Hydrangeas. This one starts off um, as a really creamy white color. And as it ages, it turns to this green color. I have this one all over my property. I was gifted this many, many, probably over 10 years ago. I propagated and have it all over my property. The only thing about this one is the stem is not that strong. And as the uh, flower heads uh, get bigger, it tends to fall over and flop, which I don't really love. Uh, this is Fall Mom that I've got. I didn't even know they were perennials. Um, after they were done in the pot, I plopped them here and come back every year for me so far. So that's a nice surprise. Over this patch, I don't have a lot of flowers per se, more shrubs. Um, here I have a huge boxwood that I've tried to shape into a circular round shape. And then here I have this evergreen. I totally don't know what the name of it is. It stays low and spreads a little bit wide, but not tall. And then of course I have a cone flower here. Don't know the name of this one also. The tag just said cone flower. Here's another one that I grew from seed. This Della is so pretty. This is probably by far the prettiest one out of all the ones I grew from seed. And the bees absolutely love this one. Definitely trying to save. I think they have tubers by now. I don't know. If they don't, I will start them from seed again next year. I have a maple tree here. It's the, the slowest growing tree ever. It's tiny. I think I've had it for like 10 years and it stays quite small still. Salvia. I got this. Left it in its original pot. It dries out so fast, so it's looking kind of sad. I think next year I should just bump it into a bigger pot so it's more hap it's, um, happier but I love this color. And here I have a Cleome that I started from seed, seeds that I've saved from last year's plant. So as you can see here, it's going to seed again. I will be saving these so that I can grow more next year. Right here, I have a Core Knockout Rose. She's no longer in bloom, but when she was, she was gorgeous. And a Phlox there. So this patch right here, I somewhat share with my neighbor. I kind of um, just started this year actually I expanded my garden over to this side uh, this side is my side and this side is kind of their side and joint but they have encouraged me to plant stuff over there for years and years now this year I finally said okay fine so I expanded here it's a work in progress it's not that pretty yet but I have um, some hooker, I mean, sorry, some hostas and some grass in there. I think I will finish it up next year. I don't have time this year and the season's ending already, so I won't be putting more energy into that. So that's the side of my yard. So there you have it. This is my front potted garden. 
Um, I have a neighbor that lives across from me. She always jokes that she looks out her window every day. The reason being is that I'm always changing the look of it. The reason is I love potted garden. I started because of how versatile it is. So when one flower go, grow out or is out of bloom and is no longer looking happy, is sad, I will remove that one and put a fresh one. For example, this autumn uh, joy one here, I just placed in today because there was another plant there that was looking quite sad. Bad. So I absolutely love this look. I started it last year, loved it, so I continue with it this year. I will, I think moving forward, I will always have this potted garden. It drives my husband crazy, but too bad for him. And if you're wondering what these circles are, my daughter was painting some stuff and she painted three circles on my driveway, so then they are stuck there. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye now.